guys, welcome back to Belky's Twist. Today, I am so excited to be here with you. I actually got dressed up, I put on a little makeup. You know, this quarantine thing is freaking real. Like, I am so exhausted, even though I am home with my children and my husband, and we're kind of just sitting around. Obviously, I am working, I am shooting for the blog aside from working, and I have the kids, but really, like, you're not doing anything super physical, so it doesn't make any sense why we'd be tired, but I am exhausted. Um, and of course, I'm a mom uh, with special needs, um, you know, children, so it's a little bit difficult sometimes uh, just to have like just a normal kind of day. But I am working on it. I am making sure that I still get my recipes out to you because like I said, cooking is my therapy and I just love it. So I'm hoping that you guys are doing well, that you're staying nice and healthy and that you're trying to make some of the recipes that you're finding online and obviously my recipes. Um, today I'm going to bring to you a pollo guisado. Now I made a version of this before um, and it was only with white meat. Today I'm going to use an entire chicken. So this whole chicken, I'm gonna chop it up and then I'm going to add another breast to it only because my one son with autism will not eat um, dark meat and uh, my husband loves white meat as well. So that way I can have a little more white meat for them. But this is super classic. This is how I grew up making pollo guisado. So it's totally classic, like I said, and I honestly think that once you make it, you will make this all the time. Super Super simple. I'm going to chop up the chicken. I'm going to season it. I'm going to put it away in the refrigerator for about a, you know, a few hours. But if you can let it marinate overnight, it's even better. So for me, because I'm making this for you right now, I'm only going to marinate it for a couple of hours and then cook it. So you're going to love this recipe. So stay tuned. Okay. So as you guys can see, I am cutting up the chicken. I'm going to cut it up in as many pieces as I can so that I can easily fit this into my pots. Okay guys, so something to note is that we do not keep the skin. We take the skin off of everything. And you know, you can cut this in half if you want a little more of, you know, breast tissue. And there you go. Just cut this big breast in half so it doesn't you know, cook and it's like so big that people can't really grab it in one sitting. So here you go, I'm just taking off. And then of course I like to take not all of the fat, just a little bit of the fat. Cause remember that fat is gonna render a little bit of like moisture and oil, um, the chicken's oil. So I love to just do that. And by the way, if you like my cutting board, I'm gonna put the link to where I got my cutting board. It's uh, Shed Customs and I love them. They're wonderful. Heath over there made me this one custom made with an autism ribbon, which is perfect. We're in Autism Awareness Month. So I love the fact that I have um, a cutting board that always reminds me of my son. Not that my son doesn't remind me he's here every single day, but anyway, I just thought that I you know, let you guys know what I'm using. So I will share the link to Heath. So I'm just gonna, you know, especially um, moving to another subject, uh, of course the wings and the drumettes, like you're not gonna take the skin off of those, but you're gonna take the skin off of everything else, like the thighs and everything else. You're just gonna pull it right off. Just pull it off and then clean off some of the fat. <clears throat> Let's do this. I don't know, like I said, who taught me how to do this, but you take the skin off the drumstick, right? And then you kind of push it back. And then you know this is like a really tough part to get off sometimes. So I just take a paper towel and I just pull it and then it's like perfectly clean. And I don't know why that ex excites me so much, but it really does. Like I get super excited every time I have the opportunity to do this to a drumstick and it's a little bit weird. So here we go again because it's only two of them, so I just get to do it two times. So here we go, yay! I love it, I don't know, anyway. <laughs> just don't say anything about this in the comments because I know I'm super weird. So now I have all of these parts and these are going to be going into a bowl. I'm going to wash this chicken with lime juice and then I'm going to season it and then put it away. Okay, so let's hang in there. I'm going to add the chicken to this bowl. I'm gonna wash it. And some water. This way too. 
Make sure I wash it really thoroughly. And then I'm actually going to be adding some lime juice to this. Now I'm going to juice uh, my lime. So as you can see, I'm, I'm using my um, prep deck juicer. And then here we go. I'm gonna take the lime juice and I'm just gonna pour it over the chicken and I'm gonna add some water and I'm just gonna quickly rinse it. Just a little rinse. I'm just gonna take it and just let it sit in there for a minute or so. Just keep massaging that lime juice into that chicken and then let that out. So I'm not gonna rinse it off, I'm gonna just get it out of there, and then now I am going to go ahead and season it. Ah, so excited. This is the best part. I love seasoning foods. I don't know why, but I just, I really do. Okay, so let's get this going. Let's season. Okay guys, so here we go. Did I mention I'm drinking a nice glass of wine? I need it, I'm super stressed. So I just figured I'd let you know what I'm up to. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to start with salt. It's a nice amount of salt. Then we're gonna move on to adobo because well, what would we do without adobo, right? We do everything with adobo. Uh, oregano. We're gonna do, <coughs> pardon me, some black pepper. No, I'm healthy, don't worry about it. <laughs> and then I'm going to do some caldito de pollo, it's a escubito de pollo, which is like a, a, what would you call it? Like a chicken, it's almost like a, I don't even know what it would be called in English. What would it be called? Cubito sin pollo. I'm gonna check this because I can't leave without letting you know what it is. So simple, but you know, when you think in English and Spanish, it's super hard sometimes. It's actually uh, chicken bullion powdered. But anyway, the point is chicken bullion. So we're doing that. We're gonna stir. Super simple. The only thing that I forgot to do that I actually really love is my soy sauce. I don't know why I forgot it, but that's not something that I have to worry about because my fridge is right next to me. So I can go ahead and grab that. Give me one second. So here you go. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit, like a teaspoon. And I know it's kind of strange that, you know, we Dominicans love soy sauce, but we really do. We use it in a lot of our foods. So here you go. And then now I'm going to take this chicken and I'm going to refrigerate it. Um, in this case, I'm not going to refrigerate it for too long because I'm making the video for you guys. But in normal cases, minimum, minimum, like six hours is what I like to do because I feel like the flavor just gets really infused into the chicken um, or overnight, that's even better. So overnight is my suggestion. So go ahead, do it overnight and then you'll see the difference. Like maybe one, another day, try it, you know, for just five, six hours and then try it when you've been able to do 24 hours or at least 12 hours and you'll see there's a huge difference. It's time to cook this. Let's add the peppers and the onions and a little bit of cilantro. Now I love these semi-dried ones, especially right now that I'm not taking many trips to the supermarket. Let's just give it a good stir. And then now we're gonna move on. We're gonna put the oil into our favorite skillet or pan and sugar. Now this sugar is super important because it is what's going to be giving our chicken its color. It's gonna caramelize it beautifully. You're gonna see it's gonna start caramelizing, turn a little brown, then it's gonna get almost black. And you're gonna see a little smoking, so don't worry. Just go ahead, put that first piece of chicken right over top of that sugar. Ooh, beautiful. And then you're gonna keep doing the same kind of movement. You're gonna put the chicken in and then move it right out of the center and finish up with all the other pieces. We're gonna leave these to cook for about four to five minutes on high heat. In the meantime, you're gonna take some water and you're gonna put it inside that marinade that we had for the chicken. 
and set it aside. Now after the five minutes are up, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna turn the chicken over. And don't worry about it, the chicken might look a little bit burnt, but it actually is, it's the sugar, that caramelized sugar, it's just giving it that perfect color. So as we cook it, all that's gonna fall right off of the chicken and melt into everything else. Mm, and now we're gonna cook this for about 30 minutes. Every five minutes, we're going to add a little bit of that seasoned water that we put aside. Just put it in. Now you're gonna lower the heat to medium low. You want it to be not too hot, not too low, because you want it to cook all the way through the these 30 minutes. Now you're gonna see, this is about maybe 20 minutes in. It's getting nice color, it's just beautiful. So 30 minutes are up, we're gonna add everything else back in. So those are the peppers, the onions, oh, beautiful. We're gonna go with about a quarter teaspoon of tomato paste, Goya salad olives, and we're gonna stir it really well. And maybe, why not, just give it a nice cover. And it's gonna cook for maybe 10, 15 minutes. We want the water to dissolve a little bit. There you go, oh, it's perfect. All you have to do now is add a tiny bit of chopped up cilantro over it and you're ready to go. You can have it with your rice and your beans or whatever it is that you love. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.